Everybody good? Still filing out. Anybody ever counted how many young people we have on an average? Anybody? 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 180 to 200. Well, then you need to all be inviting somebody because if we had a war, they'd win. Well, usually they win anyway, don't they? Connie is not with us tonight. She was at the grocery store earlier this afternoon and had one of those flares hit her and barely got home. So she's on the couch. She'll be better in the morning. That's the way that stupid stuff works. I told her, I said, by the stripes of Jesus, we're healed. But I said, it's time to start believing for the miracle. Because you know, the word says we're healed. But you have to ask for the miracle. He can bring the miracle without you asking, but we ask for miracles. Because the Father tells Jesus what gets done, and Jesus tells the Holy Spirit, but they're one. Did you get that? If you go to, hmm, I can't think where it's at, but it talks about the Father passes it on, the gifting, passes the gifting on to Jesus, and Jesus then says, okay, we need to get this done. Then Jesus says to the Holy Spirit, get, to, get it done, even though they're one. It's pretty awesome when you think about it. You say, well, I can't, I can't figure that out. Well, you're not God, <laughs> and you didn't create anything. A mess. We're good at that. We're pretty good at messes. Announcement-wise, uh, Annette had surgery today, right, back there, and she's doing pretty good, some kind of, some kind of arm surgery, elbow. And she had surgery. They said she was doing good. Uh, we've got a couple going to be going in the 19th, um, Teresa Ball and Joe Jean. Uh, Joe Jean's getting wires stuck in her vertebrae and in her nerves. Is that right, Doc? With a with a with a kind of sorta, and then you plug it into the electricity, and, and then you're fixed. No, <laughs> some kind of it. You all know what I mean. Uh, let's go down through the announcements. Uh, lost and found, if you've got anything that you've left behind, it's in the kitchen. There's all kinds of stuff in there. I kind of like going through it, and then when nothing gets taken, I can say, okay. There's a Bible in there, so surely you've remembered your word. Uh, it's in there, and there's just all kinds of stuff. So grab that before we throw it out. Uh, camp meeting, anyone that's going to be involved or wants to be involved in camp, they're going to meet tonight. Where at? Tonight, meeting in the Fusion Winter Circle in the back. Uh, they're going to be meeting uh, and talking about what they're going to be doing. Camp will be here before you know it. So they need to get some, uh, get some input from you. 413 mission trip, uh, uh, payment on that is due the 10th, May 1st, May 22nd. They're going on their mission trip. Uh, it has to all be paid by May 5th. Uh, the teenagers have got that. Deacon's meeting, which is... The 14th, that's the same time, that's next Sunday, and that's the same time NRG's having a meeting for getting everything ready for uh, Good Friday. So bring your reports and give them to your elders. And some of you all out there that bring them, you've been slacking and waiting till the next month to get them in. Get them in so I can go through and read them. But then right after, right after church this Sunday, right, Brad? Uh, Going to meet back in the... Explorer room, uh, right after service, and get things organized for Friday night. That's coming up really quick, folks. That's like next Friday. That's like if we would have been doing the Easter program, we would be freaking out right now. Cause we don't have the tomb built or anything, so we, we're waiting on Betty to get back. Uh, anyway, invite uh, that night, Friday night, invite somebody and bring them. You know, we every, every Sunday bring up visitors. If everybody here would just work on one person all year, we'd double in size. It's, it's an interesting thing how we're scared to talk to people about coming to church. The lady, the two ladies that did our bus, they did it down in our garage. And I walked out and the Holy Spirit said, go back and invite them because they're both artists. And I went back and I said, hey, you got anything going Friday night? We're having in the Jesus painter. She said, the Jesus painter? I said, yeah, the one that paints and you don't know what it is till the very end. I mean, that's how I explained it. And they said, oh, we'll see if we can come. So 
you've got to step out when the Holy Spirit tells us, and we've got to invite. And You know, I think the place will be filled up. Dad, I forgot to move your chair. <laughs> Looked over and seen Dad way over there. I was going to move it over here so it was a shorter distance to the coffee shop. Did you get coffee? Yes, you did. Okay. <laughs> and coffee is free now. If you want to donate, you can. But if you just want a free cup of coffee, if you're a coffee drinker, you can have it. If you don't drink coffee, na 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 Too bad. Uh, Teresa Ball is going in for back surgery Friday, April 19th, which is this coming Friday. Uh, she's going to have a lot of expenses plus the type of surgery she's doing. She's going to be out of work for six to eight weeks. So uh, the lady's name is Barbara Fricky started a GoFundMe uh, account. So you can go on .com and get GoFundMe.com and find Teresa Ball, and you'll be able to give if you want to give for that and help her out. Uh, it's going to be a hard, hard stretch for her, but we're believing for the best for that. We've got uh, Jennifer's brother has scoliosis, and they had to put rods and stuff down his back. He's doing really good now, isn't he? Yeah, he's, I mean, he's working full-time and everything, so keep her in prayer. Mother's Day breakfast, Sunday, May 5th. Coming up, uh, they're going to have a place back there where you can take your parents and get pictures, and it's just going to be a good time. Uh, make yourself come out to that. I know it's early. It starts at 7.30 and gets over at 9.15 so we can get church going, but come out. That's a good, good place to fellowship, and uh, let me see what they're having. They're having, it doesn't say, does it say fusion? Fusion Mother's Day breakfast will be held early, 7.30, 9.50. Treat mom with a wonderful breakfast, pancakes, sausage, fruit, milk, juice, and free coffee. It's got to be free there if it's free there. So come for that. Uh, their mission trip is the 6th to the 8th of June. Boy, that'll be here before you know it. Uh, it is an amazing thing, folks. And how many, be honest with me, how many are keeping up with your Bible reading. Ah, ah, we're in John. Rest of you, don't be condemned. Just read. I got behind because of our trip down south and things that's going on. And I had to do some about four or five day catch up. You say, you mean you don't read your Bible every day? Well, obviously I missed four or five days there. Uh, but I did catch up. But it's really good to go through that because you... You do from Monday to Friday, and then you can rest your brain Saturday and Sunday, and then you can go Monday to Friday. And if you do that and catch up, and there's a list over here what to read, then you've read the entire New Testament by the end of the year. It's really a good thing. It's, it's good to kind of know where everybody's at. Uh, and when you're only reading one chapter, you can really take your time and just really take it in and see what's going on. Uh, the Word is so alive, folks, so alive. Uh, let's lift up. Let's lift up. These are going to have surgery and just the night. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the night. We just thank you for all these young people that are active here at church and the ones that, the ones that come out. Father, it's just such a blessing to see the future church, which they are the church, the young people that are here that are going to rise up and someday take our places and keep the church rolling and doing well. We thank you for that, Father. Thank you that there's going to be a strong, strong anointing in every every classroom. Father, bless those uh, adults that have, are putting in the extra time, uh, spending their time through the week preparing and getting ready for classes and preparation for all that. And we thank you, Lord, that you're anointing them. And, Lord, that, let, them, let them just be so fulfilled in, in putting out and sharing what they've got in them. And thank you, Lord, that they're going to grow as well as the rest of us, Father, because of what they're doing. We thank you for what's going on in here. Touch your hearts tonight, tonight in our lives. We lift up those that are going to be going into surgery. Lift up Annette. Thank you for quick, quick healing in her household, quick, quick healing uh, in her body, Father, that the house can be just at peace. Thank you, Father. Lift up, lift up Teresa whenever she gets ready to go in, and Joe Jean. Thank you, Lord, that that's going to go exceptionally well. Touch hearts and touch lives. And anybody that's battling any emotional situations and circumstance, Father, let them do like the song we sang a while ago. Let them sing hallelujah and let you have the situation, have the problem, and not spend their time on the problem but on the answer. And we thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Help me tonight. Don't have my rooting section sitting down here, so help me tonight. Go, if you will, to Luke 10.
verse 30. Matthew, Mark, Luke, Dr. Luke. Dr. Luke. Title of the message tonight, don't know if it'll be 10 minutes or 45 minutes, so just bear with me tonight. 10, 30 to 30 to 37, I've got wrote down. It says, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among the thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a certain priest came down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, which is another religious authority, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed on by the other side. But a certain but a certain Samaritan, listen to this, but a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him? Talking about loving your neighbor. To him who fell among the thieves. That that was inside that man is inside all of you. It's amazing how we get caught up in the religious way of life and we don't really get caught up in the Jesus way of life. Religious people don't seem to care about anybody but their self. Where this man wasn't even a believer, but he had the compassion inside him to reach and touch the hurting people of the world, basically. Now think, think about it. When you're in a situation or circumstance and you see someone hurting, do you just go to the other side? I caught myself this week, and I didn't know why, except for I needed to weigh things. But Kelly Phillips is going through a really hard time down south and has no money, has nothing. And he was calling just repeatedly. Well, I, in my heart, ran away from that for a while because I just didn't, didn't want to go there. I didn't have the money to send. We didn't, didn't want, I didn't know what to do with it, so I just was weighing what to do. And I had to catch myself. When I read this, this set of scriptures, I had to catch myself and say, was I avoiding? Was I being religious? I even talked to the elders at the meeting last night about it. You know, guys, what do you think I should do with this? Because, you know, it's easy for people that's going through what he's going and run out of money, and they have to get money, and then you think, well, are they just doing that and they're just going to continue to get money and not do anything and da 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 da, da. You know, come on. You are looking at me like you're so religious out there. Come on. So I weighed that. Well, I called him today. We're working something out with him. But to let you know his, what's going on with him, he's having severe headaches now. He's having severe throat problems, sinus problems, which is where his cancer was. He's having a lot of hard troubles. But he needs to get, he needs to get himself out of the situation he's in, but he doesn't want to go back to New Jersey because he's got no one there anymore. They're gone. That's, that's gone. So the only people he's got are himself and the churches that he's reached coming down through. So he's trying to get to, where's the vacation spot now everybody goes to? Gulfport in Louisiana. He's trying to get there. So that's, if you want to keep him in prayer, he's trying to get his boat fixed so he can cross really basically go right in the ocean and stay in the shallow water and try to get to Gulfport. So keep him in prayer. But the story I'm telling you that is I felt like the wrong side of this story for a few hours. And not because I really, I mean, I, it was funny. I was, I come in and I was sitting in my couch, sitting on my couch, and I was praying yesterday morning and I got there a little before seven, and I was praying. Here, I'm here, I'm talking to God, and my phone went off, and I looked down, and it was Kelly. And here I am talking to God, and I turned it off. I walked on the other side of the street, folks. I did. 
because I didn't know for sure. I thought I knew what he wanted. So I went on the other side of the street. And, and then when I started studying this, I thought, are you kidding me? Here a guy don't have anything. I'm blessed. I mean, more than blessed. If I had to send him $100 a week, it's not going to kill me. Wouldn't hurt me at all. But yet I walked for a few hours. Now, I got back, and I, I, I took him back to the inn and all that. I fixed it. But I'm just sharing with you how easy it is because we, we don't want to be bothered with problems. We've got our own problems, and he's, he chose to go down the river. And he, he got to tell me as we talked today for about 30 minutes, he said, you know, the crazy part about this, I asked God just to, to let me die on the Mississippi River, but I'd like to get to the end. And he said, here I am because of your church and because God took care of me. Now I'm down here and I got no place to go and I'm still alive. You know, we, we got problems even when we're still alive. But I, you know, I know what I've got inside of me. I, I'm sharing with you all the time what we've got. But do I really have the revelation when I would allow someone that's become a close friend for those moments, hours, not very long, for those hours not reach out to him and see what he needs and see, because I thought... Well, see, my thoughts was not the right thoughts, which I'm finding, boy, all the time that that is. You know, you all know the scriptures, Ezekiel 36, 27. It says, I will put my spirit within you. Now listen to this. And cause you to walk in my statues. I always wondered what that word statues meant. Whenever you, whenever you dig it up and you see what they're saying there, it literally says given character. Let me read it again. I will put my spirit within you and cause you, cause me, cause you, to walk in that given character. I've been given the character of Christ. You've been given the character, if you're a believer. If you're not a believer, you are just a portion of what you are, have been created and what you've learned. You might be good, you might be bad. But when you get Jesus, I don't care who you are, I don't care if you're Al Capone, if you got Jesus... You have a new character. Old stuff has passed away. I, I shouldn't even have hesitated with the phone. I mean, I, Neil come in at the time that it, it happened. And I said, Neil, here, I, I said, Neil, here I am talking to God and praying about things in the church. And somebody in our family is trying to get a hold of me because he obviously needs help. And I let it go. I, I didn't answer it. I walk to the other side. I don't want to live that way. See, we, we've got to we've got to come. We've got to know. You know, Second Peter, Second uh, Peter one four says that we are partakers of His nature. Every one of us. If you've been born again, if you've asked Jesus to be Lord of your life, if you've asked Jesus that you have got the Spirit of God inside you, so, so you can make wrong, you have a free will. You can make right choices or wrong choices. And that's why the Bible has so many stories. That's why Jesus talked in parables. He wanted to get it down to the level where you can grab a hold of it and recognize. And I mean, just as quick as it happened, this story come up in my heart. Wow, i seen the problem. And I crossed the street before I got to the problem, and I went around. And I know what I've got. I know what's in me. See, we're, we're, we're given that free will to do what God has given us. But see, I've, I've got to be at the place where I've got, to have, I've got to have expectations of what's in me that's going to touch other lives. I've got to, have, I've got to know that I've got the answer. So now that I know that I've got the answer, then I have got to make a choice to do those things that he leads me to do. And I don't miss it very often, but, but I missed it there. But it's how rewarding it is whenever he speaks to you and you just follow up and you take care of the one that's broken and you give time to listen to that one that's broken and you maybe have a word of wisdom or knowledge for them because the gifting's inside of you and maybe you can fix their problem by just loving them, hugging them, 
buying a meal for them. I could go on and on with things we could help with. But knowing that it comes from here. It can't come from here. Because here's always worried about me. But here's always worried about you. And if I follow this, and make the, even though sometimes the decisions that people see we make, you think are wrong, if we're following the Holy Spirit, those decisions are right when it's all said and done. We've got to follow what's right here. We've got to recognize that it's okay. See, 1 Thessalonians 4, 9 says that we are taught by God to love one another. Not, we wasn't taught by our family. Most of the time, the love we see around people is that love, like, if you're good, then I love you. If you perform like I want you to perform, then I love you. No, agape love is what's from the inside. You love no matter what goes on. You love no matter how you've been hurt. You forgive no matter who ripped, ripped on you. You let it go and quit fighting and fussing. If you're arguing... And screaming, you're prideful. You're thinking about this person right here. Albert Willis, our old friend, used to point his fingers right back at him. But he knew he was the problem. Yesterday morning, I was the problem. Yesterday morning, I was a Pharisee. Yesterday morning, I mean, I even talked myself to the place. I even let it go till we had our elders meetings to... And I knew what they were going to, I knew what they were all going to say. Pick up the phone and talk to him. So this morning, first thing, I picked up the phone and we talked. I felt better. I mean, he's still sick and still battling and I, I'm still praying for his total healing. And he does have a plan. <laughs> One of the things he said... He's in the very last, the road ends at the bottom of the swamp. And he's in a little, they call them parishes down there. He's in a little area that's got 212 people at the very bottom. There's no place to get away unless you go back up. And there he's stuck right now. Well, he needs prayer. And he needs encouragement. He's a child of God. He doesn't know how long he's got, but he says, you know, I got peace with whatever happens. And he said, it's funny, God just kept me alive, and I guess his goal is just, just to go up to Gulf Fort and then maybe take a river up there and go somewhere. I don't know what for sure. But fact is, we've got the answer. And fact is, we have been taught how to take care. You know, so we've got to live with this expectations. In Colossians 1, 6, it says the gospel will bear fruit. Now, I'm talking about you and I. I will bear fruit. If I don't pinch off what's feeding me, I will bear fruit if I listen to what's spoken to me. I will bear fruit if I follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. I will bear fruit because I'm a fruit tree. You see, if you're born again and you've got this inside of you, you are going to bear fruit. You can't keep from it. Now, we can spoil the fruit or we can hold the fruit back a little bit, if we, but you're going to... The old apple tree don't grunt and groan to get an apple. The apples come out. The same with you. It's going to come out. But if we are free with what we've got, and we allow ourselves to have compassion when it comes up in our hearts, and we allow to step out in faith when he tells us to do something, and when we allow ourselves to be used, knowing you're going to get hurt. And we, I was talking to somebody in leadership the other day. I said, listen, in leadership... You're always wrong. You say, well, what? It's no different than a waitress at a restaurant. Think about it. The waitress, is, you as the person that's buying the food, no matter what it is, they're right. Ask anybody that's worked at a restaurant. The waitress just takes it, just puts up with it. Well, as a Christian, you're the same way. To everybody else, you're always wrong. Even if you're right. Isn't it better to just humble yourself and let God have it instead of causing the immature one to fall? Why? Because you got it right here. See, somebody like Kelly is very, very immature in his, in his faith and in his, in his growth. 
He just got born again here. So by me pulling back, he easily could think, well, yeah, they're, they say they want to help me, but do they really mean it? Come on. I'm not trying to get money from you to go help him. That's, I'm talking about me. I'm talking about my area of missing it. I'm so thankful I've got the knowledge now that I'm forgiven. And God's okay with all this. And he, he, knew, he already knew I was going to do this. But he already knew that I was going to get up here and tell all you that I'm such a jerk. But I don't care about that because, come on. See, we've got to know what's in here, but then we've got to recognize I've got a choice and I'm going to bear fruit. So why not bear the best apples you can bear? Why not open yourself up to allow his presence to just, like the praise and worship we have here. I mean, folks, quit worrying about your life and just, hallelujah. I know you're going to take care of me. I know we're going to bear fruit. I, I'm just going to forgive everybody that throws things at me. That's just what you've got to, but you've got to go over this, and you've got to know that you've got it, and you've got to, you've got to expect that you'll forgive, and you've got to expect that you're going to let it go, and you've got to expect that you're going to get stepped on, and you've got to expect that people are going to talk about you, and you've got to expect that. In this life, there will be. But, he says, I come to overcome the problems. Don't allow the problems to pull you down and be a hardhead. Don't allow the problems to pull you down and, and not be a witness. See, we're supposed to be reaching out. We're supposed to be inviting people to church. See, we, listen, we got to know that we got the answer. I mean, you got, it's good to think about how crummy you were sometimes and think about what God did to get you out of the crummy. It's good sometimes to think about the hard times you've had, but yet God pulled you out of the hard times. Then you take that, and then when you run into people, you want to say, I can help you. I've got the answer. Maybe our church is not the answer, but he's the answer. Why don't you hang out with us, and if you don't like us, go someplace else, but get Jesus. Get him in your heart. Allow him to, to be your leader. Allow him to take care of things. I don't care how much is going on. Or maybe we made a mistake and things fell apart. Don't get down. Just repent and get up. Because he's going to take care of you. He already knew the situation. He already knew what was going to He already knew what you did or what you didn't do. He already knows all of that. So our place is just to come with expectation and know we're going to bear fruit and know that it's going to come out and know that he's going to take care of it. Expect God to work through you. Did you hear me? Do you go with an expectation that God's going to give you a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge? Do you go with an expectation that God's going to give you something in your heart to share with somebody? You, you got to. Otherwise, what are you doing? First Peter, First Peter 1, 13 in the New American Standard, I got it wrote out. It says, he said, gird up the loins of your mind be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is, that is thought brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. See, what I'm trying to get across to you is grab a revelation we're talking about tonight. Grab that you got it. You got the answer. Grab that all we have to do is that free will is expected to happen. Expect it to happen. Expect it to happen. I mean, if you expect the worst, the worst is going to happen. If you expect the best, I mean, have you got up in the morning and said, Lord, bring people by my path that I could just love them? That's expecting something to happen. I promise you that if you wake up in the morning and you do that, you will be able to share with someone because he'll bring somebody by your path because you're expecting that. Well, what do you do with it? You just love them. You don't preach to them. You don't condemn them. You don't tell them they're going to hell. You just love them. You take what's inside. And you are the one that's going to cause a miracle in their life. There ain't a better miracle than, there ain't a better miracle than getting saved, folks. We got a whole lot of people. We got half of America. We got half of the voters in America. They say they know the Lord, but there is no fruit. So they're religious. They say they know Jesus, but you can't know Jesus and do the thing. Things are getting, the separation's huge now. 
I mean, it, it used to be just gray matter in politics. Now it's basic against God and for God. I mean, that's what's happening. And it's, it's, it's going to get bigger. The Bible says this. End times are here. We are in the midst of it. But we have got to get strong enough that this silly nonsense that goes around in our drama, in our life, has got to end. We have got to forgive everybody that's ever hurt you. We've got to let things go. We've got to quit talking about the problems and, and start hallelujah. Yay, God. I mean, it's just yay, God. You say, well, things aren't going good. Yes, they are. You're breathing. You're all here tonight breathing. Yay, God. He's going to take care of us. It's a guarantee. Guarantee. You know, see yourself being a blessing to somebody else. Get to that place in your life where, all right, Lord. I mean, look in the mirror in the morning. Look at me, everybody. Look in the, You say, well, this is weird. This is weird. Look in the mirror in the morning and say, thank you, Lord, that I'm a blessing to someone today. Now, it's pretty hard because you tend to want to look at your old ugly face. Why wouldn't you want to be a blessing to somebody? Why would you want to go to work and be a grouch? See, if you end it as soon as you look in yourself in the mirror, because you're looking, wow, I'm a mess. It'll take God to make me a blessing. It does. What do you listen to when you're on the way to work? Do you get built up? Do you get ready? Do you talk to God? What, I mean, what, what, you've got to stir this thing up inside you. You've got it, but you've got, to, you've got to expect it to take place. You've got to expect God to use you. Man, Proverbs 29, 18, 18 says, where there is no vision, you'll perish. If you are just getting up in the morning and just going through the process of the day, you'll accomplish nothing and you'll feel terrible at the end of the day. If you're getting up and you're going, okay, God, it's another day. I'm a little stoved up. I can't do much, but I'm going to do what I can do. The older I get, the better I was. But I'm going to do it for you. Lord, bring somebody by me. Lord, Lord, help me be a blessing. Lord, help me to help somebody. Lord, I mean, if you just do that on the way to work, I promise you, if you keep your spiritual eyes open, you'll have all kinds of people to just love. Just bless. You're going with a different attitude. You're going, you'll be a miracle maker. Did you hear me? You'll be the miracle maker. You'll be the answer to a problem. God's brought everybody here to solve problems. We are designed to solve problems. And if we follow, we follow what God has put in our heart, just set your course toward being a blessing. I've, I've been one, I've been one that, that I see if I've got something I've got to do, all right, I, I, I've, got to, I've got to make a choice. Now I've got to start working my way that direction. And then it just becomes. I can't do it overnight. It's just, okay, if I want to get up and I want to set my course to be a blessing, then I've got to get on course. And I've, what's James tell us to do? James says to turn the rudder and I don't care how big a ship it is. It, the rudder is very small compared to these great big ocean liners. But if you flip that rudder and that resistance starts hitting that rudder, you may not see it turn, but it's turning. And it's the same thing in your life. If you'll recognize what's in you and recognize you can be a blessing for somebody, you just flip the rudder and say, okay, I'm choosing to be a blessing. I'm choosing Doc's favorite line. I'm choosing to do the next right thing. I'm choose I'm not doing this out of works. I'm just doing this out th that I can be a blessing to someone. I'm just choosing on this day to be a blessing to someone and not worry about me. I'm just going to get my life in line with with touching the one around me that the one that drives me. Has anybody got people that just drive you crazy? You ever thought that maybe God brought them by? So you could be a blessing? Some of you are grinning. Now you must have somebody driving you crazy. It might even be a husband or a wife. Come on. We, we, let's be a miracle maker. Let's, let's, be, let's be someone that, that brings life. You know, scriptures that we, I was just reading in John. 
the living water that Jesus talked about is right here. So if I could give this living water to you, then now you're alive. And if you'll take it and allow it to mature you and grow in you, and, and when you get resistance and when you get hard times, if you can just go, ah, I got the living water, I don't care. It'll be all right. I'm not, I'm not going to get mad at them. I'm not going to take offense. I'm just going to let it go. Pretty soon the devil goes, you know, he won't, take, he won't take that. And he'll leave you alone for a season. And you'll bear fruit. And then he'll come along and try to knock your apples off. Well, it's coming. But you, you, you're maturing and you're knowing that he's the answer. And you're knowing that he's got everything I'll ever need. And you're knowing that I, I've just got to grow up in this area and I'm, I'm going to choose to let it go. I'm going to choose to, to walk in his. I'm going to choose to get out of me and quit worrying about me. I'm going to follow what he's telling me to do. James 3, 4 says to set the rudder. James 7, 38 says from he who believes out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. See, I can be a blessing because it's in me. I can, I can run into people and just say, hello, how are you? And if your heart's right, I can use the same words with a bad attitude. It won't mean anything. How many times have you said to people, how you doing? Ah, all right. The same words can be said with the Holy Spirit. How you doing? Oh, all right. Because when you're going out, all right, who are you thinking about? Come on. See, we, we've got the answer. And we know, we know people all over, everywhere, that they don't know this. They, they, they're, they're, not, they're, not getting, they're not getting the Scripture to where they can be alive. They don't know that it's living water. They've never been taught it's living water. They're just taught you go to church because that's what you do. Well, that's not what you do. You go to church to, to be with the people and to get built up, but you go to church to build a relationship with Christ because when you realize what he is and realize he's everything in your life, it does not matter what goes on around you. You just love people and go on. Because you're a miracle maker. And you run into people. You may, you may have an assignment right now of one person that you're running into all the time. Have you ever thought, that's not a coincidence. I can, I can go back through my life and I can, I can see different people that's been, been in my life and then they're gone. Well, while they're there, shouldn't we be pouring out the best we can into their life and help them with their miracles they need and help them become what they're supposed to be? And then they go on and are doing other things. I, I told you this story before. Mike, Mike Burleson that I worked with at the mines, I'll never forget, I was standing down, we were standing down by the big crawler at the coal loader, and we had to do some repairs, and he, he needed prayer, and I was immature in my growing then, and I, I didn't pray for him, and I knew that was a setback. After I got away, it was one of those times I went around, I just, I said, well, can I pray for you? And he said, yeah, right now. And I said, well, you know, I looked around, there was, workers everywhere and I thought well, this really ain't the place to do it but it was now that's all been fixed since still tight friends when we see each other but his that season of my life is gone I'm not going to be back at the coal mines working and I, I can't even imagine doing that kind of work now but he's off in church and he's doing his thing and I'm over here there was a season that that my love for him and his love for me changed both of our lives. It's the same in yours. You are the miracle maker and whoever you're with. Get out of your selfishness and get out of your what you think. That This is the thing that causes the problem. You're the one that has to choose. I'm going to think good no matter if it's bad. Do you hear me? I don't care if I, don't care if I know what they did. You've got to forgive. You've got to let it go. I've got examples of people that literally lived with a, a wife that was in adultery, and he knew it, but he chose to love and forgive, love and forgive, love and forgive. They're still together. The problem was fixed. God took care of it. God will take care of it. But our mind will go, and this hallelujah song that we're singing, whatever it's called, 
Why are you singing that? If you're not going to do it, that's what you do when things, you're the miracle maker, and you've got it in you, and we've got to come to the, you know, I don't, I'm not trying to step on your toes. I'm stepping on my toes for what I did. So you're just getting it. I don't know what he was going through. I don't know that it may have been the last phone call from him. But I chose to walk around him on the other side of the road, and I was wrong. And I don't want you to do it. We've got to recognize we are the miracle maker. We are the ones that's got the answer. But we've got to follow, and we've got to expect to be used. Could you imagine sitting in prayer, and God, I just, you know, bring people by my path today. Ring, ring. Well, not right now. I mean, that's really what happened. Folks, that's dumber than a box of rocks. You know, we say God uses us, but then whenever God uses us, we're mad because we got used. Well, they're just going to use you. Well, that's what I ask for. If it'll bring them closer to Christ, what difference does it make? It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about us reaching the people around us, reaching those people that's in our life for that, that short period of time. What did you impart? What, what did you say? I think back, I think after learning this, and I think back at my time at the mines when I was a hard worker and a good worker, but I can think of times where if I just would have done the right thing, it would have made a bigger impact of who is, is inside of me. And, and I'm so thankful that God forgives me and those times are gone, but I don't want to do that again. And I know I will, but I don't want to. But I know that if I keep walking with God and I keep trusting the Scripture, that I'm going to find that some of that's going to get away from me. John 4.10 says, You have been given living water. Living water. Living. I, I got everything I need. You got everything you need. I want to help someone with a miracle. Hmm. We have the very... We have the very thing we need every time we get around anybody. It doesn't matter. We had neighbors sitting over here that walks their dog. And I drove by and I rolled down the window and said, you better get on down the road. I'm going to turn my dog loose on you. That's just loving them because I love them. I could have just kept the window down. Come on. I was going through a hard time. I, I didn't take care of Kelly, so I'm just going to be mad at myself because I didn't love him. That's, come on. That's what we do. You've got to get to that place of grace. You've got to get to that place of understanding grace to where it's just second nature to say, yeah, I was wrong. Just second nature to say, it's all right, let's just, let's just love God and go on. Because, see, God's going to fix it. I promise you. If you get in the way, you may destroy it. But if you just let God have it, he can fix it. But in that, you've got to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Know what you got. Let things go. Yeah, but you, don't, you can't imagine what they did. It doesn't matter what they did. It, it, it really it, it doesn't make any difference what they did or do. Where's your commitment? Where's your love? Who you love? If you love him and trust him, he'll fix it if you'll shut up. If you'll think on the good, let it go. Follow him. Be that example that's inside of you and allow it to take care of you. Make a right choice. See, we can, we can, we can give what we have. So the first thing you've got to do is just make the right choice. I've got it. So now, what would Jesus do? And I know that's an old saying, but it's still the truth. I'm going through this right now. What would Jesus do? Would he follow his mind? Would he follow his emotions that are wrong? Would he? No, he never did. See, Jesus knew every sin. Jesus was faced every sin, but he never sinned. Why? Because he never followed those emotions. He chose not to. You say, well, how do you do that? You put the scripture in place of it. 
You just say, hallelujah, Lord, thank you. Hallelujah, Lord, thank you. If you've got to say, hallelujah, Lord, thank you 75 million times, that's better than thinking about the thing that maybe is not even true. Come on. See, we've got to recognize we're, we, we've got the answer. And then we've got, to, we've got to listen to the Holy Spirit. You all know the Holy you all. If you're born again, if you're born again, listen to me, your conscience, I was listening to, Ben, no, 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 no. The guy overseas, Singapore. Somebody help me. Joseph Prince. Joseph Prince. Listen to him today, and just one statement he made, I went, oh. Listen. He is the one that's doing everything, Jesus. So we've got to get to the place of just allowing him, knowing he's got this, we've got to just relax and back off and let him have it. You say, well, I don't know how to release it. You release it by coming to that place of just trusting and listening to the Holy Spirit and allowing that Holy Spirit to direct you and guide you and take care of you. He will do it. We just have to trust Him in doing it. You say, but, but things are a mess. <laughs> I know they are, but they're not. And we can, we can see, I would rather I would rather choose to trust and live in that peace, no matter if things are an absolute mess, than, than to complain and gripe and grumble and try to get my way. Because getting my way is most of the time not the answer. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit. Come to that place of trusting what you hear. Know that when he speaks, it's going to be good. And know, see, if you're hearing voices... Boy, this is for somebody. If you're hearing voices and it's not edifying and encouraging, just like in Ephesians 4.29, why would Jesus tell you, listen, why would Jesus tell you to only say things that impart grace and then come along and, and tell you bad stuff? So if you're hearing bad stuff, you're not hearing God. Quit listening. Talk to yourself. You say, you mean talk to yourself? Yes. Tell yourself to quit listening. Tell yourself that's not God. Tell that voice to shut up. God would never say that to me. I'm not listening to that. Because if you listen to that route, you will be destroyed. Because it will take you down. We've got to go back to what we're talking about. Make a miracle for somebody. Get out of your life and get into his life. Allow him to flow through your life. Allow him to be, to be what you're supposed to be. Love with expectations. Get up and, and know you're going to, Lord, bring somebody on. Whatever happens, Lord, you'll give me the right words. It's going to be okay. It's going to be all right, Lord. Why not get up with that expectation and then go through your day? Because you're still going to have ups and downs. That's the way it is. You're still going to have people that come to you and dump on you. That, they need help. That's, that's the way it is. Your place is just to not to do what I did. I mean, you know, I'm not going to beat myself up, but I did a little bit because I'm still growing. But to think that I would walk around fell through the river, fell through the ice back in January of last year and God just plucked me out because I was working with Mr. Kelly Phillips. If I didn't have something to do with Kelly Phillips, I could have just been gone. But he knew that I had more to do. So here I am praying God use me, and the phone rings, and I don't answer it. Now, there's times I don't answer it because of what I'm doing and, and situations, circumstances. But this, this was different because I know his condition and I know his, he, he is in dire need. I know all that. So I chose. And then I knew where I was going with my message. I'm going, yeah, I'm going to make a miracle. And I walked around him. And I made it up and it's okay. So don't beat me up too much. Because God forgive me, so I don't care what you think. We learn by this kind of stuff. No one was harmed, but I recognized, wow, 
Here I am, I'm going to get up and I'm going to tell you to make a miracle. And I stopped a miracle, possibly. I don't know what God was going to do, but I do know God, that he, he don't give up on me. He don't leave me. He don't forsake me. He don't quit on me. So I've got to take that same love and not quit on anybody. Did you hear me? One of the things my, my pastor, Pastor Barclay, he always takes care of the generals that are left in our, in our, not our military, but in our spiritual walk. I mean, he would take, he would take, he took the Charles Caps and he walked with him until he was gone. He takes he, Hilton Sutton to come here. He takes the Hilton Suttons and he walks with him until he's gone. He never gave up even though it cost him a lot to do that. See, that's the heart we're supposed to have. He said, well, yeah, but he made his own way. You made your own way. And somebody helped you. We've got to be at the place where it doesn't matter who they are. We've got to help them. Jesus died for you and I. Went through what we, well, none of us could have ever went through what he went through. He didn't give up because he knew, I got to finish this. And then he finally got up and said, it is finished. Now, we don't even use what he finished. He finished, he, he, he took the enemy, <laughs> he defeated him. It's, he is defeated, and we then have the same power inside of us to take care of us. Live with expectations. Keep a heart. Keep a heart to be a blessing. Just, just purpose. Just, I mean, you, you got to train yourself in this. I mean, that's like looking in the mirror and say, "Lord, use me today," or look in the mirror and say, "Lord, I'm a pretty good guy," or look in the mirror and say, "Lord." I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a righteous man. I mean, Lord, use me today. I mean, it's hard to do that when you look in the mirror. Lord, I'm, I'm blessed. I might be getting old and wrinkled, but I'm blessed. I mean, you've got to train yourself of who you are. And then when you get it, when you get it, you've got to use it. You can't, you can't sidetrack like I did this morning. You can't, you can't be the one step to the side. You face the problems and you get down and you say, I want to help you. Now, I can't stay with you, but I'm going to help you, and I'll get back with you. And I'll try to get anything you need. You say, well, why would you do Because that's what we're designed to do, is to make a miracle. There's nothing that feels better than blessing somebody else. Come to that place. You know, last thing I'm going to say on this. Expect it to happen. Did you hear me? I would never have started the coffee shop and the bookstore if I didn't expect it to be complete. Some people do that. They start projects and, anyway, I'm, I've lost interest. Well, when you got the source of the universe living inside of you and he tells you to go visit someone and just love them, why wouldn't you want to take the universe and love on them? Trusting that that inside you is going to give you what to say and sometimes you don't have to say nothing. I'll never forget the time that I crawled up in bed with a man that was sick and dying. I mean, literally the Lord said, crawl in bed with him. And I literally got up and crawled in bed with him. I'll never forget it. The anointing was so strong, God did something supernatural on that day. It's the same with you. If we just are sensitive to do right, the next right thing, Okay, now I'm not doing it to get favor. I'm not doing it out of law. I'm just doing it because that's what gives me peace. I'm going to think on the next right thing. I'm not going to think on garbage. Even if they did the garbage, what good's that going to do me? I'm just going to choose according to Scripture just to let it go, forgive, and move on with life. You know, the interesting part about when we don't follow that type of leading, we end up destroying a lot of people around us that needed to see the forgiveness there. We've all been hurt here. Everybody here has been hurt. We've got to forget that and then say, God, what do you want me to do to help somebody else? What do you want me to do? Well, well, well this and this happened. No, that season's over. Why do you keep dragging it back? What's God want you to do with your life now? What can I do to make a miracle? someone it's where we're at
We've got to come to the place of recognize. i got one more scripture. 1 Corinthians 2, 4 says, I rely only on the power of the Holy Spirit. It says at the end of it. Paul, Paul basically said, you know, I come and I talk to you, but my words don't have anything. But I come with power. And I come with power of the Holy Spirit in my life. If we can just get up in the morning and say, okay, Lord, I have got that power in me. And I know I do. And, Lord, help me today just to be used by you to touch somebody's heart to make a miracle for them. I promise you. And you say, well, how can you do that? Because that's what the Scripture says. If you ask, you will receive. And if you need to be a blessing for someone and you set yourself up, Lord, use me. To, to make a miracle. He will use you to make a miracle. If you've went through a hard time and things have hit you and things have all of a sudden, your whole world is just, don't, don't go to the problem. Just start asking God's grace to help you resolve the situation and the circumstance and know that he's going to and know that it's fixed. That's how we make miracles. We run into somebody and we don't know why we ran into them, but we say kind things to them and the miracle has just begun every time. Let's stand up. It's 25 after already. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, here tonight, we want to be a miracle maker. Father, thank you that we have got everything we need. We just have to start recognizing the voice of the precious Holy Spirit. And Lord, you, your word says that you cleansed our conscience. So, Father, if you cleansed our conscience, the conscience I need to be listening to then is that one that's cleansed. If I'm listening to something that's pulling me down, that conscience that's bothering me, then that's not the one I should be following. I should follow the one that you cleansed. And, Father, that's the one that says I'm righteous. That's the one that says I'm forgiven. That's the one that says I'll take care of you. That's the one that says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. And Father, help us to walk with that. And the 